Jesus is speaking to the people and he is uh, trying to instruct them in what's going to happen to him. Jesus always had a plan. Uh, he always had a purpose. He always was going to do what the Father told him to do. And so he's trying to express to not only to his disciples, but to these Jewish people um, uh, what the plan is. And um, unfortunately, without the Holy Spirit, uh, people do not understand Jesus. And without a person having the Holy Spirit, you can read the Bible all day long, but if you don't have some help to understand it by the Holy Spirit, you'll never understand it. And in this little section, amen, I think is, is very important because he's talking to a group of people that think they know the truth. They think they're following the right way, and they're not. Uh, later on, they're going to get into discussion, and Jesus is expressing to them that they don't know him. If they did, they would not be persecuting him and saying the things to him that they're saying. But if they really knew him, which they say we are Abraham's children, and he said to them, if you really were Abraham's children, then you would acknowledge me because I came forth from God, and I'm from basically the family of Abraham. I'm following the same principles. Amen. Um, I enjoyed what Jesus is saying to people because he wants them to know the truth. If you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Amen. In 1 John, the Bible tells us, not me, and it's written to Christians, not to sinners. And it says that if you will confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It also says that we are sinners and we have sin, even after we become Christians. It's awful quiet. Amen. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so there is a principle here that if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In this discourse, though, the Jewish people did not believe that they were sinners. And one very critical thing for people about being a Christian is to say that you don't make mistakes is not the truth. And the truth is, is very necessary to set you free. And so when you're honest before God, and you have done something wrong, you have sinned, you've disobeyed in some way, if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. He's not trying to persecute you. He's trying to get you to understand a principle uh, of that when you do something wrong, you need to apologize for it. You need to make it right with God. I've said it over and over and over again. If you say something mean to your husband and wife, you need to apologize. If you say something mean to the dog, can I get a witness, you need to apologize. If you say something mean to your boss, mean to somebody else, it doesn't work in the world, amen? You can't just not say you're sorry when you do something that's uh, not pleasing. So you can't say it to God as well. You can't be mean. You can't be critical. You cannot say things. And I've dealt with people over and over with the, with the fact of the matter that they want to live their life without apologizing uh, to the Lord. And they believe that they can go on and on and on, even though that their life is not in line with God. Now, here Jesus is speaking to the people. He's speaking to them, and he's telling them, you are not serving God, you are serving the devil. Now, these people are going to the synagogue every Sabbath day. They are doing religious things, but they do not know the Savior. 
If they knew the Savior, they wouldn't be persecuting him. They wouldn't be criticizing him. They would be going the same way. So what happened to these people? How did they go to, to service or Sabbath every Sabbath day and be so far off the mark? Is that their instructors, amen, that instructed them did not teach them the truth. Because when you do things right, Jesus sets you free. How many of us here, and all of us, amen, that are born again, it's true. The night we got saved, we asked Jesus to forgive us, and we confessed him as Lord, and the burden was lifted, and the weight came off our shoulders, and we were set free. Can I get a witness? Amen. We were honest before God. We told him, yes, we did sin, and we received the blessing, and God honored us. And we were born again of God's Spirit. And before that, we did not know the Lord. We weren't part of the kingdom. We didn't understand the scriptures. But after the Holy Spirit came in, then we began to understand what the Bible is saying to us. What is God trying to help us with? Amen. Um, I want to share some things today. You might want to fasten your seatbelt, but. I, I've just been through uh, several things, and some of it has been over several years, but it's getting worse and worse. People do not tell you the truth always. Uh, my mother, before she uh, passed away, went to a doctor, and the doctor insisted on her having surgery on her thyroid. And my mother really didn't think that that was a fair assessment. And so she said, I'd like to get a second opinion. And so she went to another doctor, and the doctor said, you do not need surgery. All you need is this medication. And he gave it to my mother, and she was and got better. Amen. And it's hard for us when we go to someone, we don't know their ulterior motives, but my mother did not need surgery. The surgery would have been probably $100,000 or more, and I'm sure the doctor would have made lots of money. But a true diagnosis said that all she needed was medication. And so now we're dealing with people that are not telling us the truth. It's not lies that set you free. It's the truth that set you free. Uh, we know people that have gone to auto mechanics and they were supposed to fix their car, change the oil, change the transmission fluid and filters. They did not do that and the car almost died. We know that they had to go to somebody else. They fixed their car, but it was because someone did not tell them the truth. It's awful quiet in this place. Amen. The truth will set you free. The truth is honesty. The truth is coming clean before God. And when you're honest with people and you do business with them honestly, you'll continually do business with them honestly. I have a friend now. I used to take my car when I first started taking there, and it's on Holt Avenue, and he fixes radiators. And uh, I had a problem once with my radiator. And this man actually took it aside, and it wasn't a major deal, but he fixed it for free. Hello. They don't do that all the time. Can I get a witness? Amen. So I always take my car there when I have trouble with my radiator. And I have sent I do not know how many people there to get their radiator fixed. Because I know that when I send him there, he will fix it and he will be fair and they will get their car uh, back in good running order. Amen. And it is truthful and honest. And it's hard to get that nowadays when you have a problem. Amen. When you're having difficulties and someone is not being honest with you. But the truth is what is going to allow us to be set free. Amen. 
I want to share a few more things, and it's really important because so many people in this world do not deal with spiritual things. When Jesus was dealing with people, uh, he dealt with them the way it was in actuality in the spirit realm. They couldn't see in the spirit realm, but Jesus told them the truth. There was a young girl that passed away and died, and Jesus said, she's not dead. She's just asleep. And they said, we know dead people when we see them. Hello. And Jesus said, she's not dead, but watch this. And he said, maiden, arise. And she arose. Amen. And we look at things in our own eyes, in our own perspective. But reality is Jesus knows the truth. Jesus is in the spiritual realm as well. At this case, he's in the physical realm, but he knows spiritual things. He knows things and how they work and how they operate, and he tries to get us to follow the truth. Hello. There's no point in following something else. Amen. 